do today, we're going to disassemble the tub faucet and show you how to replace a cartridge. Uh, this is a Kohler type faucet. You won't find any set screws, plate screws. They're a little different. On this particular one, the housing between the handle and the plate basically rotates counterclockwise. That's what holds the plate on as well as the handle. Again, always recommend putting a cloth in the tub to prevent anything from falling down the drain. Now once you get the, uh, the handle and the trim plate off, now you're going to find a couple of screws. That's holding the bracket that holds the handle on, but we need that out of the way to be able to get in and uh, get, actually get to the cartridge. Now these screws are pretty small, that, well, they're not short, but they're small. That's why you want to cover that drain. You definitely don't want those falling down. I always recommend taking something and marking to let you know how that plate came off because the reality is you want to be able to put it back on the same way that it came off. So either take a picture with your cell phone or a drawing, whatever you want to do. As you'll see there's a few parts to this. Just make sure everything stays assembled as much as possible. It's sure going to save you a lot of grief at the end of the call. Now in looking back inside where the faucet is you're going to see two more screws. Now we already have the water off. Clearly anytime you get start getting into a faucet, you want to turn the water off. With a tub and shower, you're usually going to have to shut it off down at the main. You can look at our previous video about isolating it and seeing what it looks like and where it may be. Um, on a sink or a toilet, they usually have an isolation valve. Tub and shower normally doesn't. So basically we're going to come in here, we're going to take these other two screws out. Now you want to be real careful with this because if those screws fall back inside the wall, again, it can be a real, real problem. Again, pay attention to the position of the cartridge. This particular one has a little stop on the top. That's going to help you reference which ends up. Once you take those screws loose, it's just going to pop off. All right. So, this is the Kohler cartridge for this particular valve. There's a set of O-rings here and a set of rubber seats. Those are usually what will cause a problem on this particular model. Kohler's got a lot of different designs. Usually suggest taking the part to a local supply house and try to identify it. And once we started assembling, this particular retainer plate actually was marked top. So, we didn't really have to reference our pictures or our drawing. Um, and again, it's so important to keep track of the, uh, the screws when you're getting back in there. If it falls down that wall, you're in a world of hurt because new cartridge does not come with retaining screws. Uh, if you've got a magnetized screwdriver, that's even better. As you can see, they're just basic tools to do this particular application. Clearly, there's as many different designs as there are brands. Some of them you have to have a deep well socket set to disassemble it. For most of you, it probably isn't going to be worth that investment to go out and just buy that for one repair. Now this particular unit has a rubber gasket between it and the tile. Uh, that way, if water gets on this wall, it's not going to be running back into the wall. If your trim plate does not have that, it's extremely important when you finish your reinstallation to run a fine bead of silicone around that plate to keep that water from getting in there. If you've got a loose tub spout like what this one is, it's also prudent to put a fine bead around there to get that stabilized as well as sealed. Okay, well we've got all the trim back on now and it just basically went back on the way you saw it come off. Uh, clearly, once you get that reassembled, you're going to do a, a real good water test on it. Now, we have an access hole from the back side of this faucet, so I can see if there's any issues with this new cartridge or its installation. It's usually a good idea once you put a new cartridge in, before you put the trim on, to turn the water back on and make sure that everything's sealed up well. Uh, in this case, we've got other access, so I'm not concerned with that. Uh, as you can see, the, the plate's back on, handle's stable, and it's going to be ready to test. Okay, well we got all the trim back in as we saw a few moments ago. 
basically after we get the water back on, you're wanting to run it, make sure everything's working properly. Always want to check to make sure that the converter up to the shower head's working as well. Some cartridges have something to do with that, but usually it's that diverter stuff that we've talked about before. So, working very smoothly, draining out well. Um, we checked the backside, no leak. So, uh, basically good to go on this one.